Hello friends, it's Chris here. Happy New Year 2018. And I wanted to share a Kerbal Space Program video about Delta V, determining how much you need to get anywhere in the solar system and back again, and being able to figure out how much Delta V your ship is capable of to know if you have enough fuel to get where you want to go and back. Uh, there are mods that will calculate these numbers for you, like Kerbal Engineer. There are some really great mods. Mods are excellent for this game, but personally, I don't use any. I like to just play the plain vanilla game uh, with no extra, just stock parts, no mods, fly the ship myself. So to do that, I came up with an Excel sheet that I use to calculate all the Delta Vs for me instead of using a mod. And I get the, the um, calculations from this cheat sheet in the Kerbal Space Program Wiki, as well as the parts list in the Kerbal Space Program Wiki. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out where we want to go. And so we'll go to the cheat sheet, and there's what's called a DV map, a Delta V map. And so if you click on that, this will tell you how much fuel you need to get anywhere in the solar system and back. And so Delta V stands for change of velocity. So if you're moving at 100 meters per second and you burn all the fuel in your current rocket stage and you end up at 500 meters per second, then the delta V is 400 meters. Your velocity has changed 400 meters from 100 to 500. So the delta means change. So this is your change in velocity map. So if you want to get into low orbit of Kerbin, then you need 3,400 delta V. If you want to get into an intercept of the MUN, you need another 860. So if you've done this before and you're at around 20 and you get into curb in orbit and you're at about 2300 meters per second, you know that you typically need about 900 more to intercept the MUN, get you about 3200 meters per second. That's what this is showing you. It's tech, it's specifically they have 860 here. You need another 310 to circulate your orbit and get in a uh, round orbit around the MUN. Another 580 to kill your horizontal movement and let you land on it. Then you need more to get back, 580, 310, 860. If you add all these up, technically you can get to the MUN and back with about 6,000 but I like to have at least 7,000 Delta V aboard my ship, so I have plenty of room for margin of error. My last stage typically has about half its fuel reserves when I jettison it, so I just like to be safe, and it, it's not that much extra when you take a look at the ship, which we'll do now. This is the ship I use to send three Kerbals to the MUN. It's only $83,780, and uh, for those tourist contracts, you could pretty much build the ship for half the value of the contract. And you see it's not a very, very massive ship to send three Kerbals, but it has plenty of Delta V to get there and back again. So how do I know that? Well, we'll start calculating it here. So you want to build your ship starting with the final stage. The final stage is actually just when you land, you'll just have the pod and the, and the uh, parachute. But the last stage it's going to have any thrust is this lander stage. And so... You need two values for each stage, and one of the values is called the wet mass, or the or the uh, start mass, and the other value is called the dry mass, or the end mass. And so the wet mass is the mass of the ship when it's full of fuel. And in this case, you can go to a little wrench, you can see it's 18.035 tons. And so now if you want to get the dry mass, you click on all the fuel tanks in this, st in this um, stage, and you zero out all the fuel and you check the little wrench again, you see it's 10.035. So there's a difference of 8 tons there. And that's how much fuel the stage has. So I go to my little spreadsheet. And for my fourth stage, I have 18.035 tons and 10.035 tons. And then for each engine, it has what's called a specific impulse, or ISP. And you get this value from the parts page. They have the ISP for every engine when it's either in the atmosphere or when it's in the vacuum. Or they also use ASL, which stands for at sea level. It's the same thing as atmosphere. The most, the two things we want out of this chart are thrust and ISP. And you can see when you're in a vacuum, you obviously have more ISP and more thrust because you don't have the drag of um, the atmosphere and the air pulling back, pulling against the ship. So I took all these values and just copied them over to this Excel spreadsheet here. 
And so you can see for we have the thrust and the ISP for sea level and vacuum for all these engines. And then we have this flow value, which we'll get to later, which is the ratio of the thrust per ISP, thrust per, thrust per specific impulse. But for our example now, you can see the Poodle has 350 ISP in a vacuum. So we plug that in there, and then we have this 9.81 coefficient. It does a little formula on it, and it comes up with 2012 delta V for this stage. And I like to have at least 1750 for this stage, so this well exceeds the minimum. Here's where I have the total that we need, 7,000. And so how do I get this delta V? Well, we go to the cheat sheet, and it has this simple equation, basic calculation. It's You take the ratio of the start wet mass and the dry end mass, you take the ratio of that, take the logarithm of the ratio, multiply it by that specific impulse, and then multiply that by 9.81, and it'll give you the amount of delta V in that stage. So you can take a look at the Excel spreadsheet, and you can see that we just put that formula in there, log of the ratio times the ISP times the gravity coefficient, and that's where we get this number. So we just keep, as we build our ship, we just keep doing that for every stage. Make sure that when you go to your next stage that you put the fuel back. So now for the third stage, we add a fuel tank and another another poodle engine. And we can see that the wet mass of this one is 38.185. So let me go ahead and drain that. And we see the dry mass is 22.185. So once again, we plug that in, 38.185. 22.185 the same 350 because it's the same type of engine same coefficient here and we see 1864 for this stage of delta for this stage is delta v again i like to have at least 1750 that exceeds the minimum so that stage is good and now we'll add the second stage which is doesn't include these boosters so let's let's get these boosters out of here for now but it includes these two orange tanks and a mainsail engine. So with the two orange tanks and the mainsail, the wet mass is 116.585, and the dry mass is 52.585. You can also get the ISP and thrust values by right-clicking on the engine, and you can see it all over here for whatever engine you want. So again, we go to our sheet, we plug in 116.585, 52.585, and you'll see we've got two columns here, or two sets of columns. And this first one is ATM, that's atmosphere or at sea level, and this is in the vacuum. So this is a stage I'm just going to assume is going to transition. So the ISP values are different, and again, because they're different here, we go to our main cell, we can see that in at sea level or in the atmosphere, the ISP value is 285, and in the vacuum, it's 310. So we plug those two numbers in. Same coefficient here. We get two values for delta V. And so if we want to calculate the transition from atmosphere to vacuum, we use this true delta V of a stage that crosses from atmosphere to vacuum. So we're going to assume that this is the stage that goes from on Kerbin below 70,000 meters to above 70,000 meters and transitions from atmosphere to vacuum. So the equation is the, 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 the delta V is the delta V of the atmosphere minus this value called uh, V out. And for Kerbin, it's a thousand meters per second. It doesn't have any data for the other bodies, but you take that value and you divide it by the delta V of the atmosphere and then multiply that by the delta V of the vacuum, or in other words, you take the delta V of the atmosphere minus the delta V out, and then you multiply that by the ratio of the delta V in the vacuum to the delta V of the atmosphere, and then you again add the V out figure for that. So on our spreadsheet, we have V out as 1,000, and we have our two atmosphere and vacuum delta V values. So oh, let me... Uh, is this right? Yeah, that's right. So we just plug those values in, and that's the same equation we just looked up. 
and it'll give us a delta V of 2333, which isn't the 3400 we need to, you know, fully go from being on the ground to being in orbit. So we add these solid rocket boosters, and I added eight of them. Make sure to, again, remember, make sure that you put your fuel back before you go to your next stage. You don't want to be out there and fire your rocket and not have any fuel in it. I've done that before. So on this, again, we can take these little struts off, and we'll see that our wet mass is 309.025. And then when we remove the solid fuel, our dry mass is 153.025. Now let's just go ahead and do control C on that. It's lagging. There it goes. Okay, so that gives us the starting weight of our total rocket, and then after we burn all that solid fuel, it goes down to 153.025. Again, we have the same atmosphere to vacuum categories here, but when I do the addition. I only include the atmosphere one because these boosters aren't going to be enough to get it totally out of the atmosphere. So I just go ahead and use this one as the worst case scenario. And so that will give us a delta V for our first two stages of 3,678. You can see it adds this that one we did for the out plus the booster one in the atmosphere. And that's more than the 3400 that we need to get into orbit. What I tend to see happening when I play is that this doesn't actually get you into orbit and I tend to need some of the stage three to just finish circulizing my orbit. And so this is the one stage that finishes getting me into orbit, does the burn to get me to the MUN and kills most of the velocity. And then I use this stage to use RC, the RCS thrusters I use the ones that use liquid fuel, so I don't have to pack any RCS fuel on this on this ship, and that will that will give me plenty of fuel to do a nice little touchdown, go out and do my science, get back in the uh, module, take off and land with plenty of fuel to go. So if you add up all the the, the stages, the first two stages here, and then the third and fourth you'll see that we have 7,555 Delta V, which exceeds the 7,000 we need. This is plenty of Delta V to get us where we want to go. And so now, real quick, I'll just mention these other equations here. This TWR is the thrust to weight ratio, and it needs to be greater than one, basically saying that you need to have more thrust than you do mass, because if you don't have enough thrust, your ship's not going to get off the ground. So if this number is greater than one, then your ship is going to get, lift off. The, the more greater than one it is, the more thrust it's going to have to, compared to its weight when it lifts off and it'll have an easier time. So for this rocket, we have our beginning weight of 309.025. And the thrust, uh, the first stage, I only use the, the eight kickback boosters. So we have eight of these kickback boosters at sea level. And that gives us a thrust of 4750. And so we take the thrust and then we divide it by the weight and multiply that by 9.81. And it gives us a 1.56 thrust to weight ratio, which is good. So this ship will take right off. And so now we have the scenario. Another scenario is if I put the mainsail in stage two and combined it with these eight kickbacks. So what would happen if I was running the kickbacks and the mainsail at the same time. Or say you have a stage that has a, a poodle and a terrier both burning at the same time, and you want to know the ISP to calculate your delta V. Well, you'll use this little formula here. And you take the sum of the thrust, and you divide it by the sum of these flow values for all the engines. So in the example where we have kickbacks and mainsail at the same time, well, say we have eight kickbacks and one mainsail engine, then we'll take the thrust from eight kickbacks plus the thrust from one mainsail and then divide that by the this flow value of eight kickbacks plus this flow value of the mainsail. And again, this is assuming we're on the ground. If we were in the vacuum of space, you know, we would use these numbers 
these vacuum numbers instead of these at sea level numbers. And that's how you get the ISP to plug in here if you have multiple uh, different types of booster or engine in one stage, you can still figure out what your ISP is. And then so you just plug that in for this value and it'll run the, put the weight in like you did, plug in the, the combined ISP and you'll get a delta V for that. And again, that's also on the cheat sheet. It's called combined specific impulse. And there you see that the sum of the thrusts divided by the sum of those flows. And that'll give you an ISP for all engines in a stage. See the ISP, like it says, the ISP is the same for all engines in a stage, then the ISP is equal to a single engine. If the ISP is different for engines in a single stage, then you use this equation. So even if you have four poodle engines, then you just put the ISP of the poodle in there. If you have four poodles and a terrier, then you would use this equation to figure out what that ISP is. And so that's how you use that. But I try to do my best to simplify it and only have one type of engine or booster per stage. But if you don't want to, if you want to change it up, that's how you do it. So that's pretty much how I calculate delta V without using any mods and kind of have control over know what I'm, you know, know what's going on on that. And again, for this one, I only use the atmosphere. But I'll just end this video with a little fast forwarded clip of this rocket taking off and landing on the MUN and then I'll send out a Kerbal to say hello and that would be it. So thank you for watching. And here we are on the surface of the MUN, and we've got lots of fuel left. You can see we've got, still got like 600 units of oxidizer and almost 500 units of fuel. We got plenty of fuel to get home because we've got these four tanks and then this middle tank here. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for you.